In this Grasshopper tutorial, I want to model this shoe parametric system in Grasshopper. Uh, so first of all, we're going to talk about this system, show you some of the pictures and videos related to this. And at the end, I'm going to model this in Grasshopper. As you can see here, I can change the model. So be sure to watch the video till the end and let's get started. And in this part, we're going to model the Shuko parametric system in Grasshopper. So let's get started from scratch. And what I want to do is to make a surface uh, for the facade. So you can make it anything you want. And what I will do is to simply just draw a NURBS curve. Let's just put the third control point in a straight line and extrude this up here. Okay, so before we import that into Grasshopper, remember if you extrude these things and if you look at the information and I click on this, you can see it's an open extrusion. So if you want to import that into Grasshopper, you have to explode it. So it's going to be a surface and you can also rebuild it if you want to make it a smoother surface and make uh, more control uh, on Grasshopper. So let's just go to the Parms menu and put the surface on and let's put bifocals inside and set this to the surface. And what we want to do is to produce these panels here. So uh, the first step is to, if you look at this, you can see that this is a mirror up here. So if I just draw this line, you can see we have a series of panels right here, and then the mirror will be up here. And up all again, we have this again and again. So what we have to do is to just control these two parts and then we can make all of those panels at the end. So what I want to do is to go to the surface utility and use the ISO trim. We have talked about this in different tutorials. So if you don't know about it, I will put a tutorial up here, which you can watch. So let's just put this to the ISO trim. It's going to divide the surface based on a domain. And in those tutorials we talked about using the divide domain two, which I can just give to the surface it's going to find a domain and divide it based on U count and V count. So let's just give this it here 
and I'm going to make one of those divided by one. If it's U, you can see it's going to be in this direction. If it's V, it's going to be in that direction. So let's just put it into U and give this maybe 12 uh, V counts. And we have to make this even because we have to divide them into two different panels up to the end. So I'm going to make this an even number. So here we have the surfaces and you can bake them and have them in Rhino if you want each of those strips. And now what we have to do is to control one of those strips and mirrors on the second one. And also there's a tutorial we've talked about dispatch. I'm going to put it up in the card section and you can simply just type dispatch and connect it to the surface. By default, if I just turn this off, you can see that it's a true false. And that means that's going to be true, false, true, false, true, false, up to the end. So these are going to go into one group and the falses are going to go in another group. So if we just put a surface to the list A, you can see this is the list A and this is the list B. So we're going to uh, write an algorithm on the first sets of surfaces and then just copy this and use it for the list B. So if we want to make those panels, there are uh, plenty of ways you can do it. But to make it a straight surface of panels, dividing it easily, I'm going to use Launchbox. So you can also use Isotrim again on this. So I'm going to go to the Launchbox plugin. You can download it on our website. And I'm going to use this quad panels. So if I give this to the surface, again, what we have to do is to make one of the divisions one. So if I give it to the U division, it's going to be this, which is wrong. So it's going to be the V. And then we can make 25 maybe panels right here and turn this off and you can control the number of the panels you want on those surfaces. Okay, so what we want to do is to move a line in the middle of these panels. Uh, let me just zoom in and show you what I mean. Assume that we have this panel here, okay? We want to pick up one of those edges and this edge can move up and down, right? So let me just draw this better so you can understand this. Okay, so this line is going to move uh, up and down on the edge. It's going to be in the normal direction going forward. So it's going to be something like this. And then we can connect it from the starting edge to the ending edge, and we will have the surface. So the most important thing is that to move this edge up and down. So let's just make this happen. What I want to do is to use the ISO curve component in the curves line. And here we go, the ISO curve tool. You can use other techniques. You can just deconstruct this, use the edges, connect a line, and move it up and down. But I'm going to use this one because it's really simple. So I'm going to connect this to the panels. And remember, because we have to give this a UV point, and the best way is to reparameterize it. If you know, don't know what about uh, the reparameterized surface, I'm going to also put another tutorial up here in the card section about evaluate surface and those things so you can understand why we reparameterize this. Okay, so now what we have to do is to give this a UV point. The best way is to go to the vector section and use a point construct point tool. I'm going to make this U, V, and put the z code on it to nothing because you can name the x, y, z to u, v and don't give anything to the z so it's going to be a uv uh, because we just reparameterized this to 0 to 1 and 0 to 1. Now if I give this a number, let's just check this out. If I give this to u, you can see that it's going to move from 0 to 1 which is in this side and if I give it to v, it's going to move up and down, right? Okay. So what we want to do is to make three set of curves. So I'm going to copy this two and three times. One is going to be at the top, which is this edge. The second one is going to move. And the last one is going to be at the end, right? So you can make this zero, which is here, something between zero and one, and then one. So we have these U-curves. And remember, you can just simply 
give them to the curve section. If I connect the U, you can see it's the right one because if you connect it to V, it's going to be it's going to be the next edges. So we have this U. Copy this so it's going to be easier to understand. And we have this preset of edges. And here we have it. So now we have this three curves, and what we want to do is to move this curve in the normal direction. And before we use the normal direction, what we want to do is to play with this number and produce that sine wave on this panel. So we have to work on this number and find a complete a sine distribution. What I want to do is to use a range. And we have talked about range in graph mappers. So again, if you don't know, you can watch a tutorial up here, which I will put about graph mapper and remaps. So the domain is about 0 to 1. We have to take that to 0 to 1 because we want to connect the graph. And the steps is important. Here we have five set of groups. If I just simplify this so you can see it, we have five set of groups, which is basically those strips. And each strip has 23 panels. So the number is 23. And what we want to do is to use this number and give it to the steps of the range. And if you see here, the 23 is going to be 24 numbers because basically the range is going to put uh, divided the domain into 23 steps, which will produce a 24 number. So here we have to just type x minus 1 because we have to make it 23. And I'm going to make this x minus 1. And here we have the range between 0 and 1. Now we can use a graph and make a sine wave. So I'm going to use the sine graph, something like this. And now we have to bring that 0 to 1 between the numbers we want. So you can use the remap. You can download it from our website. Or you can make this remap from the remap numbers. It's going to take a while, but it's just made in our website, so you can download it. Okay, so now we have to connect to it here, and I'm going to put this between 0 0.1 and 0 0.9. And that means that the edge at the center is not going to go to 0 and not to 1. It's between 0 and 1, so it's going to start from 0 0.1 to 0 0.9. Okay, before we connect this, this is a really important thing and if I connect this to the V you can see that this is producing that wave we need here okay and we can just make it more this is really easy but the most important thing is to work with this and bring it in the normal direction we have to make this come out from the surface of the panel so here it is a little bit tricky and I'm going to try to explain this so if I connect a surface to the panels it's going to find the surface which is fitted into that panel. And a trick you can use is to connect a vector to the panel, a plane, excuse me, and it will extract the Z direction. Okay, the plane and the Z direction. Now, what we wanted to do is to move these curves in the normal direction. But let's just take a look at the groups. Here we have five groups of 23 uh, data, and here we have let's simplify this you can see it's more complicated and they are all in one groups right so when you just reach something like that you can work with groups and those things but what I prefer to do is to destroy all the groups and make it into one group so if you want to know about flattened graph and simplify those things again I'm going to put another tutorial up here which is related but for now what I want to do is to flatten all of these data's so it's going to put some um, uh, 138 and all of these are into one group so now we can just simply get a move to that we want to move these curves if I give this a Z direction you can see it's going to move in the Z direction and if I don't give this flatten to this look what happens it's not really related because we have another group by building the ISO curve. It's a little bit complicated, but for now, to make it as simple as possible, it's going to be flattened and make this happen. We also have uh, four or five complete videos about groups and data management in our course, so you can also uh, check out our course if you want to know more. Okay, so now what we want to do is to multiply that one vector with a number so we can also control 
the movement and you can see that we are moving this in the normal direction okay so let's just bring these curves the top excuse me, the bottom the middle and the top now what we want to do is to connect them with this loft thing okay so it's going to be groups of three and what we need here is again let's just put another curve tool because we just flatten this i'm going to make another group of these curves so we can just control it and understand it more easily okay now what we have to do is to make them groups of three again we're going to right click and graft so each of them you can you can see it here 138 lines when we graph them we will have 138 groups okay now if we put them into one curve it's going to be a group of three and we're good to go so we're going to loft them three by three and let's just type loft this is the tricky part uh, if you want to make it something like that that's fine but we have to go to the loft options and put the normal into straight okay commit change so it's going to be straight and also we want to if we just turn everything off we want to close them at the bottom so i'm going to go to the loft options and put it as a closed loft and here we go if i bake this you can see that we have it they are a little bit open here at the top and the bottom so now we can go to the surface and put the cap on so it's going to close them bake this so you can see now we have those solids easily and produced here okay so that was the trick you can use to produce those panels now we can play with those graphs we can also use another graph maybe a busier graph You can see you want to put it like this and you can also combine graphs so remember you can combine two or more graphs together so now we have this happened for the let's just bring this a little bit forward so it's going to clear it that was for the first set of surfaces now we have to make this a mirror so i'm going to copy this all the way down for the next set of surfaces which is list b and i'm going to give this to this input okay the problem here is that we have this 23 which we can control and make it more or less than the list a so we have to connect that 23 here to this one again so we are sure that we have the same numbers again we have this one into the range to the steps and we're good to go we can delete this and this will just control the panel numbers as you can see here okay uh, this graph is going to be replaced with this graph if we would just want to make this a mirror so i'm going to go here and put this graphs handles a little bit up put this a little bit down and we're good to go you can see it's going to be a mirror and made it okay so you can also change the distribution of the upper part and the lower part so it's going to be uh, non-symmetric and you can see that we can also give it another graph maybe we want to make this graph for the bottom and produce another pattern so you can see how we can control that right so this is the way you can make it in grasshopper you can also play with this you can work with point attractor it's going to be a good exercise if you want to learn more about grasshopper and use a point attractor on this surface and attract those panels you can watch our attractor tutorials in our course if you want a complete series of attractor things you can go to the course thank you for watching remember to like this video and comment and see you next time